G'day guys, this is the start of my next project for my younger sister, which still hasn't given birth to my little niece. So we're still waiting for that, but the cot's done, ready to go. This time it's going to be a chest of drawers. I haven't even designed this chest of drawers yet. What I do know is that it's going to be a face frame construction with overlay drawers. So I need to select three main pieces of timber. I need to select timber for the face frame because that's highly visible. I need to select timber for the drawer fronts, very highly visible. And I need to select timber for the top, it'll be a solid top, very, very highly visible. Basically, this is the only Tassie oak that I've got left in my shop. Of these five boards here, you can clearly see that there is a distinct difference between the five. This one's a light grain and it's fairly open grained. This is a very dark timber and the grain's a little bit closer. This one's the same as the, the first one there. It's light colored and it's open grained. This one's very, very close grained and darker again. It also has a couple of defects through it, like there's a gum pocket there that actually fits my, it actually fits my pencil inside there. That one there, that one there and whatnot. And this board at the back, that's actually a special board specifically purchased, well, is that what, not specifically purchased, specifically selected for the draw fronts because the draw fronts, they're about 175 or 180 millimetres high. These are only six inch boards, 150 mil boards, sorry, I, I dance in and around imperial and metric, just, just like that. Six inch, 180 mil, what the hell am I talking about? All right. 150 mil boards. I need bigger than that for the drawer front. So I've got this there and it's got a little bit of, it's not, I wouldn't call it figured, but I wouldn't call it plain Jane either. It's got a bit of a wave through the grain, so it dances in and around the light. So that'll look really good as the drawer fronts. And that's not a dark timber. So you put that one to that, next to that one, you can see that there's a distinct difference. So there's a little bit of contrast happening there. So that'll work quite well. So I'll use this piece here as the face frame and I'll dodge all of these defects in and around there, the, the gum veins and whatnot. I've got it mostly worked out in my head, but I think I might hit this little gum vein here. If I do, I'll just use it as, put a little bit of epoxy in there or whatnot and make it look nice. But I'll, ideally, I dodge all of these defects in that board. So I've got my drawer fronts, I've got my face frame, I just need a board for the top panel. So I've got basically two choices. I've got dark with defects, light with defects, or light with defects. Honestly, it's a pretty simple answer. That's gonna be light, the face frame's going to be dark. So up on top of everything, I'll make it dark. So I'll use this piece here. The issue with this piece here is that there is a couple of gum veins right on the edge there. I'm gonna need four of these boards, I'm gonna to have to cut this into four pieces and laminate that up to make a solid top. And what you don't want to do, or what I don't want to do, is I don't want to have a gum vein right on the join there. Because what happens is the gum vein rolls across and hits the join and then it just stops. It just stops dead without tapering off or anything. And so when you're just passing by, you just go, there's a join there. It's not a defect, it's not a mistake, but you can clearly see that there's the lamination right there because the gum vein just stopped just like that. But I've measured it out and I need 139 mil from these boards and that just skips that gum vein there so I get fairly clean timber on each of the laminations so it should look pretty nice. So there's that. So that'll make up the top, that'll make the face frame, that'll be the drawer fronts. I've gone out and purchased a sheet of veneered MDF. What it is, it's just a sheet of 18 mil MDF, nothing special about it, just standard MDF with a veneer of Tasmanian oak on this side and the other side. Now this is the A face, it's consistent, it looks looks okay, so it looks like a bit of a zebra stripe because you've got a dark patch through here where the veneers are. That's kind of what you get when you use commercial veneers. It's a cheap option, it's a quick option, and that's why I'm using it, but it's not the best. Solid timber does look better, or it always looks better, unless you've got a shop saw veneer where you've specifically selected each piece of timber perfectly and matched them up absolutely perfectly. So. I don't have that, I don't have the time, I don't want to put the time in it because my sister's saying, when are you going to get this bloody chest of drawers done? And that's exactly how she says it. Exact tone of voice anyway. Anyway, I'll turn this around and you can see what the B face looks like. 
So this is pretty consistent. There's a consistent pattern from top to bottom, left to right. Oh man, that's heavy, especially when you're just trying to use compression to hold that. All right, so I don't know how well that's gonna show up in the camera there, but right here along this line here, you can see that they've used a different piece of timber to create the veneer. So you've got one veneer here, one veneer, one veneer, and that was from the first piece of timber. And then they've got a second piece of timber, they've got one, two, three, four, five boards there. There's a distinct difference between the bottom of the board to the top of the board. So I'm gonna be using this as the side panels. I need two panels at like 600 mil long with the grain to about um, 500 mil wide across the grain. What I could do is I could cut one here and one over here, but it's a big chunk of the board that I'm taking out j just to get a grain match. Because I actually do like this, this timber here the best out of all the so sides here. But I'm not gonna do that because it's wasteful. What I wanna do is I just wanna cut 600 mil up here 500 mil there and I'll get two panels there. But I'll have to use the other side because the other side is the A-face, that's the consistent pattern. Whereas here you've got the inconsistency right through there and it does, doesn't look right. So I'll just give a quick chat about what I've designed here, how I've designed it, why I've designed it and the joinery selections that I've selected. So to begin with, we've got a solid top here. That's a solid piece of timber that I'll well, it's not solid, it's going to be laminated out of four panels, six inches wide. So, have a look at the edge detail there. I've got a round over on top and a smaller round over on the bottom. Get rid of that one. And under that, I've got a bit of a Scotia mould that connects directly to the carcass. And the, the uh, solid top can float above it to expand and contract above it. So that's those two points there. Then I've got seven drawers. Two on the bottom, two in the middle, and three across the front. And the edge detail there is a bit of a classical mould there. Then I've got a face frame here. Two styles, well, a couple of styles in the guts there, and a couple of rails across the top and bottom and middle. That'll all be mortise and tenoned in together. Makes it nice and strong, nice and sturdy, and with so many mortise and tenons, it becomes sort of self-squaring, and it remains square throughout, throughout the course of the life of the piece, so it keeps the piece nice and square and stable and upright. So that's good. And down low, I've got beautifully shaped plinth, or kicker panel, with a bit of a bull nose on the top. Makes it nice and easy to clean, no no deep crevices or anything to have to clean away. And then this side panel here, that's the veneered MDF that I was talking about. The way that I'll connect that to the face frame is I could use something like a pocket hole or anything like that, but I don't, it's not so, that, it's not so much that I'm against pocket holes. I don't have any jigs here for it, and I don't need the jigs, I can do it by hand, but it's just not a good way of doing it. It's not the best way of doing it. A good way of doing it is like how I'm going to do it here. I've got myself, I'm going to machine in a little tongue onto the MDF and then I groove into the back of the face frame to accept that tongue and that locates everything nice and neatly and there will be a significant difference between the solid timber surface finish and the veneer surface or appearance and so when I do this, I'm going to have to put a little bit of a V-groove right in that corner here, just to make a clear separation between the two pieces. It's something that I can't avoid. So I might do a V-groove or I might do a shadow line. I haven't quite decided yet, so we'll get there when we get there. And in the back there, I'll be using metal draw slides. So all I need to do is build walls so that I can attach those metal draw slides to it. I don't need to worry about draw runners, draw guides and draw kickers for when I was doing traditional draw construction or web frame or anything. I just need to get some, somewhere to attach the draw slides to. So this piece here, that's a piece of 18mm MDF and these two packers on either side are simply 12mm bits of MDF 
wide enough to accept the draw slide and thick enough to take up the extra thickness needed to get to the inside edge of the um, face frame. And throughout it, there's a couple of solid timber rails connecting the sides together, makes it nice and strong, especially up the back there. And because this is a solid piece of timber connecting into a veneered MDF board, I need to select an appropriate joint. Now, pocket holes would also be good here. I don't, like I said, I don't do pocket holes as a general rule. So what I'm going to do is I could mortise and tenon it. I could use a mortise and tenon if I wanted to. It's not a very good joint, it's actually quite a terrible joint in this situation. The tenon on the solid piece of timber is beautifully strong, very, very strong. But the mortise in the MDF, well that's terrible because you've got, what have we got here? We've got 51.3 millimetres wide by 6.3 mil thick. That's a tiny amount of MDF that can simply break off and splinter off and then I just lose my connection altogether. So a better way of doing it is to come over here and then do, use dowels. Instead of having a great big cavity here which allows this piece of timber just to break off, you've got this little amount of timber here and a little amount here and a little amount here all protected by this timber in here, or MDF in here, MDF there, MDF there, and MDF there. It's a much better way of doing it. It's much stronger, it's much more um, uh, better. It's more better. It's the bestest. Now did I talk about this plinth? I don't think I did. Got a nice shaped plinth there, and that simply connects to the side panels, or the, the carcass, by way, of a, by way of a rebate into the side of the plinth. That that ledge there will take the weight of the carcass while, while that face in there gives me a good surface to glue the plinth to the carcass. And, in under, and underneath here, I haven't drawn them in, but I will be putting some corner blocks in under there, inside there and inside there to, to keep everything nice and strong. And also a couple of glue blocks inside there somewhere just to really connect the plinth to the carcass nice and strong so that if you ever come along and kick this really hard it doesn't want to flex and break and end up cracking the glue joint across this front here. So that's pretty much it for the chest of drawers. Oh and there will be a rebated back panel inside there somewhere. I think it's it's gone missing. There it is. Oh and the change mat. Alright, so absolute exact size of change mat. So that's the change mat that my sister has supplied me. It's just a piece of foam stuff. What I need to do is I need to build a little surround out of hardwood to surround that on three sides. So, And when I connect this to the top somehow, I think I might just screw it into the back there somewhere so it's out of way so that you can't see it. And... I'll put it, instead of putting it dead center of the top, I'll put it to the left there, or to the right, which, ah, where'd it go? There it goes. And that gives a little bit of a work surface on top to keep a bottle of talcum powder if needed, or um, baby wipes or something. I have no idea how to change a baby, but I'm sure my, I'm sure my sister will figure it out. She has to, she's got no choice. So that's it there, that's what we're building. So thanks very much for watching. This was a talky video on a, more of a design and material selection video, which I probably titled the video Design and Material Selection. Would make sense, doesn't it? So the next video will come up pretty soon because I'm about to walk outside and start machining up the material for the top. I'll get that glued up. The drawer fronts I don't worry about until I'm making the drawers. Then I'll get the material for the face frame machined, get these rails machined up. May, uh, well, yeah, I might do the kick, I haven't decided yet. That, that doesn't need to be done until later. So, definitely do the face frame and the top today. Alright, so until then, until I've got the next video up, I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and like and share it with your mates because this video is going to be awesome.